When children are growing up, their parents and other adults often teach them the lesson that they should not judge a book by its cover. The only trouble is that by the time we make it to adulthood, most humans have forgotten this lesson. Hi, I'm Linda. This is Linda's World. This is Top 10 Tuesdays, and tonight we're diving into the top 10 most common misconceptions about me. You see, I had an entirely other video planned for you this evening, a Top 10 Tuesdays that I will share with you in the future. But after a conversation with a friend of mine this evening about some of the things people think of me that aren't true, I scrapped that plan and I said, oh no, it's time to clear the air. So ladies and gentlemen, these are the Top 10 most common misconceptions people make about me and they start right now. Our Top 10 Tuesdays list begins in just a moment. But first, I would like to invite all of you guys who have not yet joined Linda's World to go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. And while you're at it, hit the notification bell so you can tell when all new Linda's World videos appear. Linda's World is an inspirational channel. It's a place where you can go and escape the real world for just a little while and get the tools you need to go back out into that real world when you're ready and live your best life even when you're not exactly living your best life. You know, like adulting. So, with no further ado, the list of top 10 most common misconceptions about me. Now, I'm sure that all of you guys out there have a similar experience. You think you're putting yourself out there in one way, and once in a while there's people out there in the world who see you for something you're not. And you just wish you could wear a big t-shirt that says, you don't understand, it's not really like that. Well, since I can't walk around in that t-shirt all the time, I figured I'd make this video. I was talking to a friend of mine tonight, and we were talking about misconceptions about me, and then later about how certain people don't understand certain people in the world based on their appearance, or how they think they're coming off, and what have you. And so that sparked me to scrap the original Top 10 Tuesdays list and get to the list we have here. Don't worry, you'll get my other Top 10 list another day. But now, most common misconceptions about Linda. All right then. Now the number 10 most common misconception people have of me is that I was popular in school. Okay, now I have a bit of a bubbly self, you know, and I've got blonde hair and blue eyes, well, blue gray, but whatever. And I come off as, I don't know, kinda, kinda chipper, you know, and so people must assume that I was like a cheerleader with like a football boyfriend who like ran the school in a very Regina George from Mean Girls kind of phenomenon. You know, nothing could be further from the truth. I have a whole video out about my bullying story and about how through from grades K through eight, I was mercilessly bullied to the point where I considered suicide. And then in nine through 12 and college, mind you, I was completely isolated and left alone, which I actually preferred to the bullying. No, I was not popular in high school. Don't let these highlights fool you. Don't let the winged eyeliner tell you that there's not, um, you know, that there's some kind of, uh, what can I say? Some kind of like, you know, captain of the cheerleading squad girl behind there, because there's not, okay? I can count on one hand the amount of friends I've had in my life, so not even. All right. Number nine is one that really gets my goat. You know, I could live with a lot of the things on this list. I can. But number nine, I cannot, and that is that I am not smart. Mm-hmm. That's it. People still have the misconception that a woman with blonde hair is not intelligent, that a woman who puts a lot of effort into her appearance is doing that to hide the fact that she doesn't have brain power, so she's got to have something, um, that a person who likes to adorn themselves um, is concerned with only that and not brain power. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a teacher and I have a master's degree and I am very well read and I've been reading for 40 years. Yes, you heard me. I learned to read at three and I, um, well, no, I'm not stupid because I have blonde hair. So I could just, I could go on and on and on, but I don't want to seem stupid when I talk to you about not being stupid. So I'm going to shut up, but I will say this misconception, hundred percent, just hundred percent. Okay. Um, the misconception number eight is pretty interesting because this is something that a lot of people really think, and it's, it's kind of hilarious. Like it makes me, I don't get offended. I crack up actually. And it's the fact that people think that I am very straight laced and traditional. Okay. People meet me and they hear me talk for two minutes and they, you know, they get a sense of my personality and they either like it or they don't. But one of the things they think of is that I that if I were on Sex in the City, that I'd be Charlotte. You know, that I am very traditional and um, I don't use curse words and I don't like, 
drink or smoke or you know anything like that like I'm a very like a almost church going kind of gal you know and I put off a weird vibe that I'm like you know ooh virgin ears you know nothing could be further from the truth one of my favorite words in the English language is fuck okay and um and I do not have traditional values like at all okay as we get more into this list you're going to learn some of them but no traditional and straight laced absolutely not in fact I have some pretty well I've been um accused of having some pretty interesting morals over the last 43 years. So let's keep going with this list and you'll find out more. The number seven thing on this list, the number seven misconception is that I'm one of those prissy girls. You know what I mean. I mean the kind of girls who don't get their hands dirty. The kind of girls who would balk at anything spent in nature or camping. The kind of girl that wouldn't clean her own toilet for fear she'd break a nail, okay? Nothing could be further from the truth. Now listen guys, I don't have my nails on right now because I don't have the time to go to the salon, but I gotta tell you, I may come off that way and have like usually a big manicure or whatever. I have camped and I was fine with it. I scrub my own toilet. I wash my own dishes by hand, okay? I get down and I scrub my floor with like you know, various equipment and just get down and dirty in there. If a speck of dirt gets on my clothing, I'm not like, oh my, the dirt, the dirt. I'm not prissy in the slightest. I will go down with the best of them. If you want me to dig a hole in the yard, I'm digging a hole in the yard. You know, if you want me to lay down stakes for a tent, I'm laying down stakes for a tent. I am not an outdoorsy person because I don't, I don't care for the outdoors much, but I can do it and it's not because I'm prissy. I don't balk at a challenge. You know, like if I need to use my hands, well, gosh darn it, I'm going to use my hands. My dad, who has two sons, I have two brothers. My dad, when he was alive, would say that I'm the best son he ever had. And that's one of the running jokes. And his birthday was yesterday, so I just wanted to throw that in there. So, yeah, best son. That'd be me. Nails and all. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the number sixth one, well, the number six one kind of gets on my nerves a little. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever, but ah, it kind of gets me down. There's a lot of people out there, because I'm going to be 43 in April, um, who have this belief that because I don't have children, they have this belief that I am very bitter, that I don't have children. Um, they believe that I am, um, that I'm somehow poo-pooing it and that I don't like to hang around children or, or talk about kids or look at people's pictures of their kids or whatever because I'm kind of pissed off that I don't have any, you know, and that my ship has sailed because I'm 43 and that... Part of my life is coming to an end soon. Nothing could be further from the truth. I I just have never thought of that as something to do. I've just never had the desire to have a family of any kind. I, um, I'm a loner by nature. And also, I find a tremendous amount of value in raising dogs um, instead of children. Um, I don't poo-poo it for anybody else, but I poo-poo it for me. I think that it would be a mistake to do something halfway. You know, no child deserves half a mother. And that's exactly the kind of person I'd be. I'd be a reluctant mother if I were to give birth to a child because it's not my forte. It's not that I don't know how to do it, but I'm not like, you know, I've, I've taken care of children before, but I'm not like, that's not my calling. You know, it's not something that I find joy in personally. And um, I get so much immense pleasure out of my dogs and watching them grow and you know I'm on my second dog now Sophia was with me from ages eight weeks to 13 years and Chloe the dog is now five and sitting right beside me on the floor and loving mom and mom loves her and it's awesome and I don't feel the need for human children because I'm extremely fulfilled being a dog mom and that's not to mention the two cats that have crossed my pads in my home but you know so we'll call myself pet mom then instead of dog mom just saying and I'm very happy that I'm not a mom mom because it's what I chose on purpose. So, so there. <laughs> We're halfway through the list and now I want to get to the ones that are a little more, how can I put this? Ones that get my goat a little. Ones that I don't just laugh off. Ones that, uh, misconceptions that I don't go, ha ha, that's what you thought and move away. Um, ones that kind of sting because I just... I want to scream from the mountaintops that they're not true. <laughs> um, and so number five then, as we're halfway through the list, is that there's a whole lot of people out there who think that I am bitter for being single at 43. 
Okay, this kind of goes along with the children one that I said previously. Um, I am divorced and I am extremely happy to be divorced. Um, no one needs to be in a situation that is um, painful to them and is making their life worse instead of better. I am very, very happy um, with my choices in life. There's, um, there's an old quote that says it is better to be alone than in bad company. And in 43 years, well, I mean, that's, that's not fair. I was a child. For, I've, been, I've, I've had puberty 30 years ago. So in the 30 years that I've been a heterosexual female, I have found nothing but people who didn't particularly care for me and I didn't care for them, but we were sort of stuck together. People who um, were treated me in a very, very unkind, uncool manner and made me feel like about as about as small as this kind of like when I was being bullied in school like you know you you certainly don't need to be dating your bully you know you sure as hell don't need to marry them um and I did that and that's not cool and so therefore I'm very very happily divorced I am not bitter in the slightest I love the fact that when I come home to my house there's a dog there and no man or woman for that matter um I am very happy that when I go to sleep in my bed at night that I'm the only body in there you know, and if I elect to have another body beside me in the bed, then that's grand. But I'm not looking for it, nor do I feel bad that I never really got much of it because I have often found my relationships to be um, a combination of a profound waste of my time and an exercise in um, psychological abuse. So, no, I'm not bitter that I'm single. I'm bitter that I didn't used to be. <laughs> so we can move on now. Okay, um, we're getting there, folks. This is this is going rather quickly. And number four, in the vein of uh, in the vein of the uh, the thing I just said, is that people believe that men flock to me in droves because of my appearance. Uh huh. I said it. Now look. I don't particularly think that I look all that wonderful. Um, I've had people tell me all my life that I say those things because I'm looking for attention and compliments, and I'm not, because compliments make me very uncomfortable, because I don't agree with about 99% of them, okay? Um, the only compliments I've ever taken and truly agreed um, on was when one person said I've risen above my station, and that was one of the kindest things someone's ever said. But the thing is, when they get to talking about my appearance, I don't see it okay and because I don't see it I don't see why other people get that other people think that men do you know yeah I've got blonde hair okay it's rare in my neighborhood I live in Brooklyn New York and most people are brunette fine whatever um you know I'm a different ethnicity than most people here so I look different right um and I you know this area here isn't exactly small you know um when I was heavier they used to be larger but whatever um and you know people you know, some folks have said that I have a decent physique, you know, um, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't particularly find my body to be terrible. Um, it's kind of okay to me, but my face is something I don't particularly care for much. And in case you haven't noticed, I go through great pains to make it look different. Okay. Um, that's, I didn't, I wasn't born with winged eyeliner. That's pencil. Okay. Well, actually it's liquid, but whatever. Um, and so people have this belief that men, come to me in droves and then I have to beat him off with a stick. You know, that's what you hear when you go to like, you know, a family function and people, you know, call you pretty like, oh, look how pretty you look in your dress. Oh my God, Lindsay, you must have to beat them off with a stick. I, I shake a stick around and can't find any of them. It took me a very painfully long time, like, a, a, like, a, like an embarrassingly long time to lose my virginity. I, I couldn't give it away. And, um, and so I... I don't even know what to say there. It, it's, it takes me so long to even find even one male person who wants to speak to me that it is unbelievable that people even think this. Um, it's funny, a long time ago, my ex-husband and I were having a fight where he told me that he didn't trust um, me around other men. You know, he's a jealous fellow. And um, and I said to him, and it's, this is probably the wrong thing to have said, I agree that this sounds kind of stupid but I said to him I'm like do you have any idea how freaking long it took for me to find you okay you think I'm gonna find other people where the hell are they coming it took me till I was 33 to even meet you okay so how on God's green earth am I meeting these other random folks you know who am I cheating with all the people who hate me <laughs> right and that sort of settled the argument for a while but it's true men do not flock to me so that's a myth of epic proportions 
So there. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, the um, the the third most common misconception about me is that I am energetic. Okay, I pull off this bubbly thing, you know, I'm just like, hi guys, what are we gonna do today? You know, and like I walk into class, you know, cause I'm a teacher and I'm like, okay guys, let's get ready. Okay, take out your book, here we go. Oh boy, what a wonderful day, right? And meanwhile, I am so fucking tired, okay? Like there have been times when I've had so little energy when faking my energy that I have, my remote just fell on the floor, that um, that I have considered just lying down on the desk and just, you know, just lying there at school until someone comes along and says, do you need any help? Like that's how little energy I have. Um, I, I mean almost nothing of what I say when I'm excited about stuff because I am that fucking tired. Um, I am not energetic in the slightest. I, I have several different illnesses that I'm combating that make me just like kind of lucky to even be alive and so when i fake my energy it's for it's it's for y'all you know it's for the public it's so people it's because people don't want linda they want linda you know so they get linda and they don't get me because real me is asleep right now <laughs> oh dishonesty it could be used for good purposes everybody benefits don't they maybe not me but <laughs> that's not what we're going for here okay now the next the second most common misconception about me is one that I that I think I, sh I think I should have made this number one because I I become enraged when this happens like this is like I, I don't like I I do I, do you see like I'm not even forming my words correctly and I ad lib this stuff I don't I don't script this I talk to you plainly and I'm talking to you plainly and I'm at a loss for freaking words because number two is that I'm faking having a mental illness to get attention. Would you like to consult my best friend who um, dragged me by the hair to the psychopharmacologist 20 years ago? Would you like to look at the lithium in my medicine cabinet um, that I need to take so I can like stay out of prison because I am flamboyantly bipolar. Would you like to come and see me on any random Tuesday night or so in the middle of January when someone says something very simple and I say to them, it doesn't matter, it's never gonna be summer again and we're all gonna die, so why don't you just leave me alone? You know, that kind of stuff that I genuinely mean at the time. So if a person comes to me with the misconception that I'm just trying my hand at mental illness so that people will say, oh shucks Linda, I like you, well, you know what? Those people can go to hell because if they would like to hear what's in my head, okay, if they would like to spend one day in my brain and tell me that I'm not mentally ill, well, well, they can suck it. And uh, yeah, so I think I've just about covered it. And now, honorable mention time. All right, so there's people out there who think that I am having a midlife crisis because I enjoy the music of Ariana Grande. There are people who um, believe that I am faking my knowledge at my job because I talk about The Great Gatsby so much and it must be the only book I know when actually it's just the book I prefer. I know lots of books. Um, another honorable mention one is the fact that I am an extrovert. I'm actually an introvert posing as an extrovert. There's a difference. And um, yeah, I think those are honorable mentions. And so now I would like to get to number one. And I don't want to belabor the point because it is, um, it's just one that's kind of awfully sad. Um, and the misconception people have of me is that I am happy. I'm not. There's so much wrong with me that I don't even know where to begin. And I'm not going to belabor the point. This isn't a this isn't a sob story video. This is a top ten Tuesdays, and I I got troubles. And um, if you'd like um, me to divulge these troubles, you would 
absolutely have every right to um, DM me and find out what's shaken, and I will gladly tell you. But it is not something that I like to broadcast on YouTube because I don't know that that is helpful. You know, I know this is an inspirational channel, and I know I'm sitting here talking to you about how I find lack of inspiration, but one of the things that people have always known about me that's never been a myth um, is that I am much better at handling the troubles of other people's than my own. So I want you to know that you're in good hands. And isn't it nice to take inspiration from a person who needs inspiration? You know, like I know what I'm talking about, like I've been where you are. So if you're tuning into my channel thinking, oh, here's this girl's got it all together, that would be terrible because like, what could you possibly glean from my experience if all my experiences were unicorns and rainbows, you know? Like the fact that I'm opening up and telling you that like I don't have a life that's any good, a life that in any way, shape or form I imagined for myself 25 years ago, a life that makes me, that gives me fulfillment in any which way, um, a life that um, puts me to sleep at night without burden, you know, and makes me wake up refreshed. Like that's not, that, that's not who I am. Like that's not what I have. I don't know that I've ever had that. Um, and you know, sometimes are better than others, certainly, but it's pretty much been um, an adulthood filled with misery. Um, one compounded problem after the next in terms of health and mental health and finances and family and friends and, and men and just 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 terrible misfortunes that befall me and leave me with an ache so great that um, I just almost don't even have the energy to fight the misconceptions. So yeah, I know. Thanks for that one, Linda. That was deep as fuck. Well, that's okay. Um, it's cool because every so often when a person like chooses to air their grievances, when a person opens up and says, look, I'm not okay, you know, then that's good because like, you know, the first step is admitting you have a problem kind of thing. Like I've got a problem, you know, like I've got several. So I'm saying that to you and that's great because I name this, you know, so now if I got a name to this, like I can like try to fix it. Like I know what to do, you know, I mean like it's not always going to work, but like I know how to try at least to fix what ails me, right? Um, some of the answers aren't as simple as some people may make it out to be, but then again, these people are the ones who have the misconceptions about me, aren't they? So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to ramble any further. This has been Top 10 Tuesdays. This has been the Top 10 Misconceptions about Linda. And now I think that since you've heard these things, maybe you have a little bit of a deeper understanding of what I'm up against and a deeper understanding of why I'm on YouTube to begin with. Because if my life were being made into a movie and I have low battery, if my life were being made into a movie and they asked me, hey, Linda, what would you like the title to be? I would have them call it, don't let this happen to you. And that's what I want for you guys. I don't want this to happen to you. I want you to be successful. I want you to be happy. I want you to live your best life. I know I say that all the time, but it's true. It may be too late for me, but it is not too late for any of you guys. So if you've liked what you've seen, then go ahead and comment and give this video the old thumbs up. And I will catch you later this week with some new information. And maybe we'll make it a little bit more uplifting this time, huh? What do you say? <laughs> okay, well, another Top 10 Tuesdays in the bag, and I am going to go. So, 